future of blockchain gaming. Trends to watch in 2024 and beyond. Hey guys, beautiful people talking about Web3 and games. So I'm here with Assad, CVO for Medieval Empire and Crypto Kid which is an angel investor and a content creator. Asad, tell us about the game a little bit. Test, test, ah, now it's working, okay. Yeah, hi everyone, I'm Asad, I'm co-founder of Medieval Empires. Medieval Empires is a strategy game. Uh, just imagine you go back in the 13th century where the Turkish tribes were fighting against the English crusaders. Um, you can actually replay that in, in the game because we have the English Crusaders and the Turkish factions. You can own your land um, and on this land you can invite your friends and your clan to fight with them together against others. You can get resources, build up your town, uh, produce more heroes and army and then uh, fight against invaders outside. It's a strategy game basically and we are building this since uh, two years now. Um, the, uh, we're in a close beta stage at the moment with 1,000 uh, players testing it. And um, end of April, around that, we will uh, open our open beta version where uh, more people are able to play it. Um, we have, uh, the face of the game is uh, the biggest actor in the Muslim world. He's called uh, Engin al a Turkish actor. He, he plays uh, in, in a lot of big, TV series and is very well known in his Muslim countries. Nice, and you play the game, right? Oh yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's incredible. So I think, um, you know, I've actually on onboarded so many other 16 year olds to play the game in my class. It's funny, because everybody's on Medieval Empires and I first met Assad two years ago when you guys were, didn't even have the game yet. And uh, the game is awesome uh, because, you know, the biggest market for gaming is actually kids my age. And it's super important to target those people because once a kid plays a game, the father or the mother sees them playing and they're like, oh, what is this game? And then you get mass adoption throughout all age groups and that's exactly what happened because I've been playing Medieval Empires for hours and then my dad was like, oh, what's going on here? Because we used to play Clash of Clans together and you know, he started playing the game and he's like, oh my God. So I think gaming is what's going to be bringing the hundreds of millions into crypto indirectly because you know, Asad is, knows a lot more about this, but developing a AAA game it takes so much time, right? It takes four to five years. And what I'm seeing in gaming is that we're gonna be seeing a lot of these professional games that are like Call of Duty level launching in the space between this and next year. So previously, right, Web2 gaming, like uh, I play Call of Duty, I play FIFA, all of these are Web2 games. We, ju we just didn't get a game in crypto that is up to that standard. And you know, playing a game like Medieval Empires, it's, it's, it's really fun, it's addicting. And you don't play it just for the fact that you can make tokens from it, uh, you play it out of enjoyment. And I think that's the future uh, that we should be looking for in terms of GameFi. Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, Asad, gamers, what do they want? Is play and earn or play to earn enough? Yeah, I, I think uh, obviously the, the easy answer we all know is that people want to play to have fun. But I think what's missing and what happens in the last 20 years with digitalization of all processes and bringing everything online is that people miss one thing. And I mean, they even don't know maybe that they miss it right now. But basically, you know, we had our DVDs, our CDs, we buy the games, uh, it's ours, we can sell it. Uh, to anyone else and it's fine, there, there's no issue with that. But then everything went online, you buy games online, you can't sell it anymore, you can't own anything anymore in these games. So there is a, is a big gap of I, I, I do something for a very long time online, but I don't own anything of it, which is very unnatural uh, if we look in our real world, because whatever we do, we own something or if we go to work, we earn something or, or if we buy our TV, it's ours, we can sell it again. Like it's very natural. But if you now have a look on the, on the market, there are two billion players in the world. So it's one of the biggest uh, economies where people are in online. But they, like less than 1% of all of them own anything, w which makes no sense, right? And there is this one story like, um, I come from um, 
change management and uh, digital transformation of big companies. And what you learn in change management is that people, they need something to change. So they, the in intrinsic change takes a lot of time, obviously. And there's a story about the trolleys, you know, when you travel back in the 60s, um, like mostly men were carrying them on the shoulder. And there were no like tires on the, on the ground of the trolleys. And uh, people never thought about like, why would I use like a trolley and drive it drag around? It. I'm a man, I'm a man, I can carry it, it's, it's not good. But then this one company came and they invented that and they put some tires on, the, <laughs> on, the, uh, on that and then everyone used it, but no one asked for it, you know? So it's like a very logical thing what people will adapt when it's there. And I think it's exactly the same with Web3 Gaming, where we enable ownership in something because it's natural. But people lost this natural thing because of digitalization. And now we have the blockchain, this technology, which is perfect for giving ownership back to the people. And once people understand that, and they will soon, um, then there's just a question everyone will ask. There are games with uh, blockchain and o ownership, and there are games where you don't have ownership, and they have the same quality in the future. Not yet, I know. The, the games are not in good quality right now, which is very natural because like, blockchain gaming is so new. The big funds into game, gaming came maybe three, four years ago, and it takes time to create good games. So it's very natural, right? Once this is there and the quality is there, why would anyone choose? A game which is same quality and one I have ownership and one I don't have. Like, for me, it's very easy to understand that blockchain game will be the, the next big thing in gaming and the platform shift. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if given the option to play and make money at the same time versus play and owning nothing and not making any money, I would challenge anyone, <laughs> like you said. Yeah, to. actually, but, but it's not only the money. Obviously, this is something where it's great, I can sell it at a certain time, but it's more like it's mine. Ownership. It's mine. I, I put money in it, I put time in it, and if I do it usually, I get something for it, but in games, it's somehow not the case, right? So this is the first thing what is really important in human behavior, I would say. And then on top, at the end, if I want to stop playing the game or something like that, I can still make money out of it and it's great. But for me, it's really the, the, ownership, the ownership, which is very natural. Yeah. What's your view? What do you think? You know, let me tell you this story. So, uh, you know, I have played like Fortnite for so long, like when I was 12, 13, I played Fortnite for days and I know a lot of my friends also played it. And, you know, I was spending so much time, like hours and hours and hours in every given day. And then my mom was like, you got to stop playing this. Like, what are you, what are you benefiting from playing these video games? And I, you know, thought to myself, like, she's right. I, I don't make anything. And I was spending so much money buying skins and digital property that I didn't actually own. And just like Asad said, like, you know, being able to own these assets you purchase online, it was something that was never offered to people before, so they don't know that they actually need it. But the moment that blockchain technology is integrated, you give, you give this unique, um, you know, you give this unique ownership uh, ability to people, and uh, it's going to bring so much more adoption into games that do offer it rather than games that don't. Because all of those hours that I spent playing this game, you know, what if I told my mom, hey, look, I got the skin. Now it costs like 5x what I bought it for. Then it's something. Um, and, you know, you look at especially like uh, countries where it's, it's, you know, the third world countries where a lot of people uh, make actually their livings from playing games. Um, in, in the current Web2 world, you have to be part of a gaming guild or you have to be a, a number one streamer to be making money from GameFi. But blockchain gaming changes this completely because you, as the average gamer, you can potentially gain monetary value from playing video games. Uh, so I think it's incredibly revolutionary. Uh, it will stop a lot of kids from going to school probably, but... Uh. <laughs> Actually, and it's even more, especially for young kids, is also understanding financial systems. Because in the games, like also Medieval Empires, you will have... You, you can buy land, for example, and it's yours, right? And you have different people on your land, and you can tax them. So you can say, I want to have 10% of all your wood you gather, for example, it's going to me because I'm the landowner. And on, uh, let's say, 5% of all silver you get, I want to have it, right? So you learn on, on 
and, and the market will change. Like based on the price which is offered for the land, the, the price will change over time. And I need to adapt as a landowner because if I, the tax will be very high all the time, no one will come to my land. I need to adapt to what's happening in the in-game economy. But it's a self-driving in-game economy. And this is something where uh, kids, but also not kids, they learn how markets behave because it's a self uh, regulating financial economy in the game. Yeah, it provides kids and people around the world actually financial literacy. Like, imagine kids learning how, uh, you know, because in-game economies, they're gonna be very similar to what we, what we use in daily life. And this is just another element of education that's gonna be given to kids. So I think it's super bullish. And Mr. M, you know, we, Marisa, we were talking about something three days ago. And uh, I think it's super important to bring up because remember, we were talking about the potential of a uh, combination of AI and humans and what will happen to humans and what will we do once our jobs are taken away from us. You know, I said, I mean, uh, let's bring that topic up because that was very interesting what we discussed a couple of days back. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, we, we, we had a really good, good talk about uh, if AI, and, and it will happen probably, is replacing a lot of jobs. And uh, there will be like in 20, 30, 40 years, a lot of jobs will be not there anymore. And AI is helping us with everything. What will people do? What people always do is they consume entertainment or they play games or they are in some worlds. So gaming will be even more important in the future and one of the key pillars of your life probably. I mean, it's already somehow for young kids because they already play like eight hours a day or something like that, which is absolutely crazy, I would say, especially if you're in school. Uh, but it's already the case and with AI taking away jobs in the future, it will be even more. So that's why it's like the gaming industry itself will be absolutely crazy in the future. It's already, it's like 200 billion uh, economy at the moment. Wow. It's, it's bigger than the music and uh, movie industry together combined. So what I like about what you said is the dimension that the game is going to offer. For example, like you explained, I can play the game in so many different ways. I can play the game by being a landlord. So I own my land, I tax my people, and that's my playability or I can rent my land to someone else and make passive income, or I can play the game actively, whether I can go, attack troops, build infrastructure. So you basically are offering another layer, which is super interesting. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we want uh, that the players choose what they want to do. So our game is also a free-to-play game. So you can just come into the game, just start playing, and you don't, like, if you're not interested in owning anything or earning anything, it's fine. You can still play it, you can still have fun. And for people who want to own anything or be landowners, have a little bit more financial thing happening, they can be that. Or if they are grinders in the games who want to play a lot and make something out of that, it's also fine. So we want to really give the choice to the people. And it, it sounds like, you know, strange, but it's really like with blockchain gaming, you give somehow power back to the people what they lost 20 years ago with digital in the digital world. Yeah, there's a devolution because like th that was such an interesting topic because now venture capitals can be also playing the game, right? And if the, if the in-game economy is growing, if the game itself is growing, its user base is growing, then venture capitals, they can purchase land uh, and they can, you know, make passive incomes from it. Coca-Cola can go and buy land in medieval empires. And, you know, it just incorporates so many more layers, as you said, into a game itself. Uh, it's actually mind-blowing. And just a topic that I wanted to add to what we were just discussing. Like, you know, if AI replaces jobs and everybody's on a universal basic income, uh, people will be playing games, just like Assad said, or uh, consuming content to spend their time. And if gaming itself offers an extra layer of passive income to these individuals, then they're gonna be playing games, right? To make whatever extra buck that they can while also having fun. So I think it's super, super important. Yeah, early well said. Okay, scalability. So what kind of challenges from a blockchain gaming developer do you think are you facing? Yeah, I think it's important to talk about it because like everything seems to be bullish and I think it will be for sure, but if we, talk about tech, like the underlying tech for blockchain games, which would be a blockchain itself, for example, then we see, um, of, of course, there are new evolutions happening with new blockchains, which are faster and cheaper. But if you see the first wave of blockchains, let's say they were, or they are still like too slow and too expensive for really big games, because at the moment there is no real issue because you have these games with maybe 1,000 players, 500, 500 players, uh, 
maybe 100,000 players, which is not huge for a big game, right? There are games, they have like 10 million players, 15 million players, a couple of million players, and if you have that, and a couple of these games, and they go on a blockchain, this blockchain will crash probably because all the transactions will be used by games only. Um, so that's why I, I think there needs to be um, faster evolution of the next blockchains, but, but I heard there are some coming up right now which will be much faster and much cheaper. So it, it's on the way, it will take some time, which is fine because gaming and mainstream adoption will also take a little bit more time because games still evolving uh, in terms of, of quality, but this will happen. Another thing I think is um, the um, APIs, like if you want to list your game somewhere, there are these Steam for Web three, let's say it like that, to so the gaming platforms where you can put your game and people can download and play. There are a lot of them right now everywhere. And if you want to connect, like real, have a smooth connection, you need to have an API, develop it, connect you to this platform. And then there are 10 platforms you need to do API here, 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 here. And then it, it's somehow a little bit pain uh, for the developers. So I don't know yet if there is an aggregator. If not, it's a very good startup idea at the moment. To yeah, build save that for yourself. <laughs> yeah, to, to build an aggregator for all these uh, gaming platforms. You have one API. You can connect to all these uh, gaming platforms. So this is also something what's uh, still strange, but it's all fine. As I said, I, I come from digital transformation, and it's everything what happens is very natural that you have also these scammers at the beginning, that you have these failing projects, that tech is not ready for what you want to do. It's always with new tech or a new platform shift, you always have that. So if, if I hear people and they say, yeah, but it's not good and it's not working and look at the tech and all that, I understand that these people, which is okay, I, I, I don't judge them for that, but they never probably uh, had a deep dive into what digital transformation actually means. And this is what we see here. This is not a small thing. This is converting or changing a potential like 200 billion industry into something new. And uh, this takes time and uh, some patience and uh, tries, you know, and uh, this is where we are. And you know, think about it, right? So the, um, if, if GameFi receives crazy growth, then it's also going to simultaneously drive innovation in blockchain too, because as Assad said, the more and more, more and more people get onboarded to GameFi, uh, th these networks are not gonna be able to handle tens of millions of players uh, all playing together at the same time. So uh, it's going to drive innovation in blockchain technology, and we're gonna be seeing both industries uh, grow at the same time, and adoption will, will be intertwined. Uh, so I think GameFi is gonna be incredible. It's definitely the future. Yeah, and it goes without saying it's exponential. I mean, you remember the internet, right, when it started. I remember dialing into it. It was a mission. It was really expensive. So look at now, you actually, when you are not dialed in, you're like, hey, where is the Wi-Fi password? So it's going to get faster and faster. And in terms of, like, mainstream adoption, how long do you think we need to wait before the big gamers are going to come up with AAA games and solutions on the blockchain? See, I, I'm not a developer, but I think that uh, for AAA games to be going into the market, like for example, GTA 6, like everybody's been waiting for this game. Ever since I was like two, people are waiting for GTA 6. And I don't know if it's gonna come out in my lifetime, maybe my kid's lifetime it will be coming out, who knows. But uh, it, it, the, the point of it is it takes a lot of research and development, especially when you're handling new, new technologies. And to do the market research for that, to see how it's gonna work, to make sure everything is streamlined, it takes time, it's going, to, it's going to require patience from our side. But once these games go onto the market, once they pick up traction, the Web2 gamers are gonna immediately see the value of playing GameFi, uh, GameFi projects instead of the traditional games because they get more for the time they invest. Because when you play a video game, you're investing your time. And it's all about the monetary value you get in return. So I think it's going to be a, a huge concept that um, maybe in the next two years we're going to be seeing a lot of pushing into the market. And hopefully, if this bull market does well, then projects will also have more money and more capital to deploy. So I think it's going to take another two, three years. But once the call of duty of crypto comes out, I think there's going to be a huge shift. Up.
Yeah. I mean, you, you can already see, like, there are a lot of big gaming studios. I think it's like, if you have a look on the top 40 gaming studios, one third of all of them already building blockchain games right now. It takes some time, but they're already building. So this is not a question, like, if it will happen. It's a question when it will happen. And also, you, you see, like, we made from South Korea, there are one point, I don't know, five billion dollar gaming studio. They built WeMix, uh, which is also getting huge as their own blockchain. Um, they also built a $100 million fund in DIFC Dubai now. And uh, so these big guys, they are coming to the market, they bring even money, and uh, they will do it by themselves, and how big companies are doing it. Sometimes they are too slow, because they went late on the boat, then they just buy what's good in the market. Whoever is in the market. So for yeah. them, it's somehow an issue that they're slow, but at the same time, they have a lot of money, so they can just uh, fill that gap with buying studios which are on the market. Nice. Well, Asal, thank you so much. Crypto King, thank you so much. Guys, round of applause for those amazing. <laughs>